and the panel topic is policies, regulation and standards for EV thermal management. Our panel moderator is Sri Abhiji Sinha and our first panelist is Mr. Gaurav Joshi, Deputy Secretary, Ministry of Heavy Industry, Government of India. Gaurav Joshi, 70, he has 17 year experience in international plus domestic environment in various MNCs and government of India. Strategic and enterprising leader with extensive experience in managing cross-functional delivery in a multi-site global environment with 15 years of experience in general management of logistic and supply chain distribution center, India and export experience in corporate and business functions. Possesses hands-on experience across the value chain in procurement, manufacturing and sales function. Everyone with a round of applause, please welcome on stage our first panelist, Mr. Gaurav Joshi. And uh, I would like to invite our next panelist, Mr. Saurav Dalela, Director ICAT International Center for Automotive Technology. Mr. Saurav Dalela has uh, been associated with automotive product engineering, power, powertrain, vehicle dynamics, testing and validation and product sign-off with his experience being very active in both on-road and off-road segment. His career has been a confluence of both private as well as government sector. He has worked with global brands like Toyota, Daivo, General Motors, Case New Holland, JCB and has also been associated with Government of India in the capacity of additional director, Natrip and director I get earlier under the ages of Ministry of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises. In his new role as director I get, Soro will be responsible for all the current automotive certification, CMVR compliance. Further, he would be responsible for bringing in research works and developing facilities for new technologies such as EV, hydrogen, ADAS batteries and software. Everyone with a round of applause, please welcome Saurabh Dalela. Our next panelist is Mr. Prashant K. Banerjee, Executive Director, Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers. Providing leadership in formulation of technology standards, regulation and policies to support growth of autumn global harmonization, keeping national priorities in sync with sustainable globe goals of India-centric mobility. Coordination for regular exchange of information among other countries associated via IMMA, ICEM, FAMI. Driving initiatives on road safety, environmental sustainability, and energy security. Advanced technology monitoring with regards to future of mobility. Everyone with a round of applause, please welcome here Prashant K. Banerjee. Our all the panelists is here and a request to all the panelists, kindly please uh, proceed for the panel discussion. And uh, I also request to our moderator, panel moderator, Mr. Abhiji Sina, please come and uh, start this. Very good afternoon. I need not to explain that the kind of heavy weight speakers we have on this panel and all of you must be very anxious and very excited to hear what new thing and what progressive dynamics are going to come up, shared on this exchange. But this discourse which we are going to hold today is definitely going to take us through the challenges which industry has been going through, industry has been facing. And also to an extent we wish to find solutions in our own way. And during this finding, one common perception that we develop is what we think is right, what we believe is absolute, and what we wish to aspire is the best. This exchange of information from a regulatory perspective, from a policy perspective, and from also an industry perspective is going to 
give you an outcome, out complete, uh, I can say, overview of the challenges which all of us are facing in different, different directions. But when it comes to electric mobility, I always believe that you need to shake hand and you actually need to percolate that benefit which, which comes with electric mobility. And with this, uh, I would be very happy to share that recently when we started this project of National Highway Electric Vehicle, we wanted everyone to take this benefit of running on a lower cost, which was not getting translated to the user. Definitely a, a person who is traveling from Delhi to Jaipur or Delhi to Agra or any place to any place, any other city, is going to pay less than the half a cost. And in the less than the half a cost means if you are paying from Delhi to Jaipur for a uh, luxury vehicle of around 11 to 10,000 rupees, same distance you can travel, you can cover into 4,500 rupees. And that is what we made it possible, that is what we made it available. It is still running, all of you are invited to join. These changes, these ground level you know, uh, options are now available on your phones. So you go by bus, you go by electric car, in both way you are operating on a lesser cost. But to bring this together, there is a policy required, there is a infrastructure required, there is a manufacturing, there is a battery. So all, all this together is there on the stage on, on with us on in the form of three very eminent speakers. We'll start with uh, uh, Goro Joshi ji. He will take us through a very you know, significant uh, outlook of what ministry is going and I think overview has already been given by the Dr. Uh, Qureshi but we are very excited to hear Goroji Apko and over to you please if you want to come here. Thank you. A big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you Abhijit. So good morning. I see lo very low energy. I think this forum should have better energy. It's a thermal and uh, it's basically about the batteries evolving technology. So once upon, good morning. good morning. Yeah, okay, that's better than previous one. So what I'm trying to say is that I have been called in government last one and a half year back from uh, industry as a manufacturing sector expert. So I have joined as a manufacturing sector. Earlier I was in different companies and my background was in automotive, capital goods and chemicals and other manufacturing. So the idea behind having standards in electric vehicles is well known because when anything goes wrong and fire comes and the consumer, we see it in the news, immediately comes to the radar that what's happening? Are we not serious enough on the safety aspect of the human being? Life is precious, life is precious and life is always precious. And to look after what we can do to the next level, I would like to give one example. Few years back, India was not a big exporter of auto components because earlier our emission standards were different and many of the countries where we export right now, they were requiring higher standard than what we were having. So naturally our market was limited. Since last few years we have been catching up with emission standards, our standard has gone up and we as a country seeing more and more demand for the components because basically we are going up at par with the other countries. And the same needs to happen or is happening right now in electric vehicles. You might have seen that last year there was a lot of uh, fire incidents in Ghaziabad, Nasik, Delhi, Mumbai. It was all over. But we see that the, the different mechanisms which are put in place like AI standards which is phase one and phase two or the phase three for uh, some other 156 and 38. We see that the industry is gearing up and the supply chain R&D is picking up with that. The FAME scheme which my boss already explained so I would not again explain the same thing what has been explained. The incentive that government is giving is expecting that the incentive should be given to the product where there is a higher value addition than the rest of the things. And considering this fact, we see that the MORTH has given the new standards and these new standards are enhancing the safety. I think this year we should see there should not be many incidents 
there has been improvement in battery standards there has been improvement in the battery pack testing there has been improvements in the cell level testing we had been having multiple meetings with cell level manufacturer or oems internally to understand what where is the industry right now because one side we have a cost then one side we have the volume and another side we have a technical aspect to grow up and i would really like to thank the organizers over here because they have brought in such a uh, dry subject in uh, in this meeting because everybody lo would like to discuss about electric vehicles where are they going how is the capacity increasing how is the volume increasing but this r and d managers they are the product they develop the product and if your product is fantastic the salesman will never have a difficulty selling it across the different segments and if you have the product right if your people are right and if your supply chain is stable you have a very good opportunity to go to the next level so i would like to thank and we see that in coming days the, uh, our standards uh, should also check so i would like from this experts to learn more about where are the international standards where are the indian standards where is the difference what are the gaps and whether these gaps would be harmful for the human safety of the uh, person who is driving and if there is a no problem absolutely fine we need not to change anything but there is a complete evolution we have to have a complete evolution that we should always look forward what should be the next step so uh, today morning i had a discussion with few of the eminent r&d experts and i got to know about apart from lithium ion now we are going towards sodium then sodium then we have also have aluminum air then there are also some other techniques coming and i believe it's very important we should not look where is we are right now we should look 3 years down the line where we should be 5 years down the line what are the regulatory challenges we will have when we have the sodium air batteries what are the regulatory challenges we will have when we will have aluminum air batteries we have now i uh, recently i read a news that cattle in china they have increased the energy density they have doubled the capacity it means that there are some researches going on over there and i think our experts are no less than that we have shown that we can grow to the occasion when it is needed electric vehicles the number of electric buses which are there in india are much higher than what europe has isn't that incredible and this is possible only because when set number of people come together they have a common ambition that we have to make it a ev hub we need to make it a better place for people to have a environment friendly pollution free country uh, cities i think we have a bigger responsibility and the and the experts who are sitting in this uh, room i think they owe much lot to country not less than what government because i am speaker here it doesn't mean that i owe it is a jana andolan our prime minister says whenever we want to take you might have heard him for swachhata andolan he says jana bhagidari it means that when people come together they have a common mission and they would like to achieve what the country needs the things will come things will change things regulatory hurdles will go away you and i would like to need to work together on what are these hurdles what are the technology are changing continuously what are the standards we require uh, and not only right now as i mentioned i am saying it twice we need to look 3 years down the line we cannot say what is our requirement right now we have to look after what is going to come in next 3 to 5 years we need to start preparing ourselves at least from standards perspective because standards is a such a aspect that technology research then you need to do lot of validations ai i get uh, director is over here he is seeing what are the changes in battery standards how much testing he has to do and if we do it at last moment we will only have a uh, hiccup or we are always creating a big a uh, cusp that we need to go take over so i suggest that we look forward and i would like to really see from you what would be or what industry would like to see going forward as my uh, previous speaker already mentioned at the end of this event you would also be giving us suggestions or the recommendation what you see so i suggest that uh, you give us that thanks a lot for that and uh, thank you for joining thank you thank you so much sir with with this what you have spoken is bringing lot of people in in you know enthusiastic mode to reach out to your ministry 
with their recommendation, with what they have in their mind, what kind of business model may require some support from the policy ground. And also, there are a couple of very brilliant you know, uh, inputs and suggestion it comes to be incorporated in the industry. But we will keep some time for the question and answer. We are extremely running out of time because of uh, the other session went very well and very engaging. Sir, we, we would ask you to come and your uh, expertise as a from society perspective, from the industry association perspective is highly welcome. It's very, very valuable for all of us. Please welcome Prashant K. Banerjee from Society of Indian Automotive. Uh, very good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's my profound privilege to be here. And the topic is very, very interesting. Uh, EV Thermal Management Summit 2023 session, policy and uh, regulations and standards. As uh, the morning inaugural session, uh, Joint Secretary Heavy Industry Ministry very clearly articulated every aspect of the EV thermal management uh, nuance and also the questions people ask. I stand here representing auto industry and auto industry representing two-wheeler, three-wheeler, four-wheeler, truck, buses and industry perspective on this cusp of a time when the transformation is happening in mobility industry with disruptions around the corner in the form of case and case or case different people say differently so connected autonomous electric and of course shared mobility. So in electrification journey of India, I think thermal management comes to the fore because the nature of our tropical climatic conditions poses the biggest threat that you cannot copy paste European or American or Japanese or Korean uh, design as it is. So therefore, EV thermal management has very 10 very clear nuanced technical challenges which poses threat to the designers giving the affordable, safer and environmentally benign sustainable mobility options particularly on electrification and starts from cell chemistry selection, design of cell, packaging of cell in a battery and placement of a battery in the form of a package in the vehicle and having placed it obviously the electronics of the battery management system and it's a game not of a hardware alone, then comes the software. And software also has a multiple aspects of rate of charging, type of connectors, voltage variations, thermal runaways, and having placed battery in a vehicle to your satisfaction, then comes the operating conditions, which is a very unique one in India, and the climatic temperatures rising during summer in Rajasthan and elsewhere nearing 50 degrees centigrade, I think it's a any designer's nightmare for designing an electric vehicle with EV thermal management to the satisfaction levels. When you know that voltage fluctuations, the habit of a customer who is not aware about charging uh, tendencies and his behavior. So therefore, it's a one of the biggest challenge. Indian designers, Indian automobile manufacturers, faces when he has to provide an affordable mobility solution coupled with the expectation of the customer, durability, quality, robustness. So therefore, every aspect of policy, standards, regulations becomes paramount importance. But I'm proud to tell you that Indians are engineers mind always bring to the front the best solutions and I have no hesitation to say that despite the beginning of India with some kind of apprehension and hesitation we have come to a point where right from ministry's policy prescriptions and the kind of alacrity with which the course correction is done whether in the form of the guideline of safety standards for batteries 
very, very quickly involving the experts from all domain of battery design, development, testing, certification, seeking their recommendations, implementing the re recommendation the shortest possible time, having heard the industry's challenges on the recommendations, revisiting the standards and again readjusting, recalibrating, repositioning the standard requirement, I think nowhere in the world has happened. So therefore, I am very proud to tell you that the cohesiveness with which ministry is here, I am proud to tell you that heavy industry ministries work. Those of you who interact with them, go at 11 o'clock in the night, 10 o'clock in the night, Saturday, Sunday. I do not know Gaurav Joshiji. I think uh, the kind of contribution Ministry of Heavy Industry has done in the last five years, I have been working with the ministry for the last 32 years. I have not seen this kind of work ever happened. So therefore, I am very proud to say on policy front, there is no un uh, stone unturned left. So this is one aspect. Now comes the testing, certification and validation, durability of the battery. So Director ICAT is here and Director ARAI is also deeply involved in the continuous dialogue discussions on what kind of safety guidelines needs to be evolved and starting from the nail penetration test requirement management. I would not say dilution, I would say removal, I would not say exemptions, but right from thermal runaway test management to the management of voltage fluctuations requirements, charging, discharging, cycle definitions, the different temperature conditions in which we need to have a testing to be done, what kind of climatic chambers, what kind of infrastructure facilities required, everything government has facilitated. And that's where, as Mr. Qureshi mentioned in the morning, that ICAT and ARI are best equipped now to do the EV thermal management of batteries of course, the challenges which you realized and faced, obviously when large number of imported batteries came in with, without much quality check, durability check, without much system integration done very well, obviously you know we have to face the challenges. So customer education point of view, from assuring the standardization of uh, charging infrastructure point of view, there was a question on swappable battery. I do not know those of you who are involved in this swappable battery discussion. I believe uh, Sinaji mentioned very clearly the challenges in a very few sentences. But this discussion has been happening for the last two years. An umpteen number of deliberations, discussions at different level has happened. The last meeting happened with Honorable Minister, Union Minister of Commerce and Industries. And they were all stakeholders from Gogoro to Aether to Sun Mobility to industry associations, everyone, Reliance. And then there was a final conclusion of that meeting was that at this point in time, the most important consideration is that have a common standard safety requirements to be regulated and notified first. And that's what has happened. The government of India has done that. And the next step would be, can we achieve connector standardization, form and shape standardization, or for that matter, the communication protocol standardization. So basically, everybody is working cohesively, concertedly, and collaboratively to achieve what India needs for a very, very robust, durable, safer, affordable, quality EV thermal management systems and auto industry leaders are cognizant of the fact that we need to do a good work. Even though it takes time, we should not hurry, hurriedly introduce products which will bring bad name to the EV products. And that's where cautious but very, very calibrated and confident steps are being taken, not only by the government of India, industry association and industry members, for all category of vehicles, whether it's a bus, whether it's a car, whether it's a truck. 
and two wheelers three wheelers you have seen the kind of progression that penetration has happened in three wheelers two wheelers are rightly mentioned the good ones are still in single digit but we are sure that with pass passage of time we will have a very greater adoption of uh, these vehicles uh, in our system and public education awareness and information sharing is very important and summit like this will really do its best to convey the right requirement right acceptance criteria and right customer expectation setting so that we can have a more and more electrified vehicle in our system which will further the sustainable mobility initiatives siam as an association a responsible association of corporate uh, you know members of different companies from the globe have started during auto expo a initiative called vidyuti karan in english it translation is electrification and we are very very clearly aiming towards giving a sustainable mobility based affordable safer durable quality electrification options to our customers in line with the expected trends thank you very much thank you for wonderful words mr banerji we will have some questions also from you because sam has a very critical crucial role to important and one more thing i want to share with my audience is isme mera koi haath nahi hai ki beech mein gaurav joshi ji baithe hain ek taraf regulatory body baithi hai aur dusri taraf industry body baithi hai so big round of applause for this formation which naturally has happened i was there when you were taking your seats with this we are reaching to the last address from regulation and this subject is very close very associated with the regulation how what kind of testing before you speak sir i want to set the context because uh, i also have i am from ease of doing business me i my work profile is absolutely opposite to regulation if it is over regulated i am not happy if it is under regulated i am not happy so for us we need an apt regulation for bringing curti not curtailing innovation is still taking users context their interest their benefits in the account and giving a very uh, ease environment and that ease environment when it is presented or when it is spoken by minister i think i can quote two of the ministers here our honorable minister for road and transport said by end of this year you will have electric vehicle price and the diesel vehicle sorry uh, petrol vehicle price equal when it comes that vision it is not only a one line statement it is a statement of a design which we have been following from the 2014 if you look at 14 15 16 17 18 budget government has went ahead to incentivize infrastructure manufacturing then again the charging infrastructure then 2020 budget if you will see users when users were told that if you buy electric vehicle you are saving 2 lakh rupees in the budget union budget in last and the latest it was spoken that this year government will bring swapping policy and within 3 months i am not having sudendu sinha sir ji here but within 3 month after a very conclusive and very inclusive dialogue draft came out by end of this year we were supposed to be having a draft and this relates to the minister's statement because when you are buying a vehicle without battery you are definitely buying it in 30% 40% less price this all need to be regulated this all need to be brought on a platform where safety of people their lives as uh, joshi ji said and then also the innovation need to be brought in a very synchronized very orchestrated manner this toll this you know uh, entire responsibility when one the discussion is done it goes to you sir you are the next next speaker who is going to speak and tell us how you see this is growing and going ahead and bringing us giving that vision of our leadership on the implementation so with me please welcome mr saurav dalela from icad 
Thank you very much uh, for this uh, very important context setting that you helped me to do. A uh, very good morning to all of you. I think uh, uh, lots has been discussed about the EV uh, and we are now going to talk about more on thermal management which is like safety, safety and everywhere safety as Mr. Gaurav just now said, life is precious, life is precious, life is precious. But why this topic becomes more important is because of the following reason. See, in an IC engine, if the thermal management is not working well, you have performance issues and you finally end up having a problem with your engine. But in this one, if you did not have it well, you end up burning the machine. And that's why it gets more important. So the downside of having a poor design or a poor manufacturing consistency in an IC engine is not that problematic you have performance issues primarily and a little bit of safety issues. But here you have more of safety issues and less of performance issues. Anything going wrong, straight away you get into a thermal situation. Uh, in my last uh, 30 years of experience of testing and validation that I have been involved in various kinds of machines, one thing that comes out very clearly and that's actually no brainer but otherwise it actually has uh, come through my experience as well is that there is a additional factor in whatever we talk about and that is India specific factor. Now imagine that we have western countries, we have eastern countries, uh, all of them have certain characteristics of the climate. The Western countries typically are colder countries. Uh, usually Europe and US would have uh, temperatures from negative to a little bit of positive and that's all. Uh, Eastern countries again would have a similar terrain. When it comes to India, when the same product lands in India, now look at what it happens. Mind you, it has to be a single product. It cannot be multi products, you know, one for north and one for south. Here what happens is that this vehicle or this machine has to be in negative temperatures because it has to operate in terrains like lay and dark. It has to be on positive temperatures up to the extent that it has to be in Rajasthan for plus 50 degrees Celsius in summers. It has to be in coastal areas which means a lot of humidity and a lot of corrosion resist resistance that it has to face. And it has to also move in floods. To top it all, we have a different kind of roads compared to the other countries and we have different kind of driving habits. And for all this, you need one product. You don't need multi products. And this is what makes it the most challenging and this is what I call is the India specific factor. Apart from the other challenges of thermal management that we all are facing, this is one more additional thing which will come to India and therefore when uh, uh, Mr. Abhijit was mentioning, you know, that uh, regulatory versus industry. This is going to be a new dimension. It's going to be a new equation. Uh, I get reminded, and I was speaking to Mr. Banerjee in the morning, and uh, although although we were kind of introduced as India versus, uh, oh sorry, uh, industry versus regulators, but we uh, we both have worked together once upon a time in the same organization, and. This organization was having a technology coming up and they were heating the throttle body. It was an IC engine. I'm talking about 25, 30 years back. It had a heated throttle body because it was coming from a European design or a Eastern design. It had a heated throttle body. The point is that nothing happens if it goes unnoticed in India because in India actually you don't need it. But then if, even if it went unnoticed in India, it doesn't happen, no, n heavens won't fall. <clears throat> but if you had this in an electrical situation and you had a heated something, something, you are going to land up into thermal issues. And, and this is why a concept of plug and play coming from outside technology to India is just not going to work even on regulations. Now imagine a situation that you left a screw a little 
it was supposed to be torqued at, let's say, some x kg meters or uh, Newton meters, and we left it loose. Nothing will happen. Or let's say nothing unsafe will happen in an IC engine technology. But if, imagine if you left a coupler loose, it's going to be fire straight away. If you left some, uh, some motor windings a little different, if you left motor uh, couplings a little loose, it's going to be nothing less than a fire. And this is where, and the most difficult part is that when a failure happens, it's easy to identify in case of a fossil fuel engine because it's there. It's right in front of you. If the engine has ceased, it's in front of you. But when a thermal incident happens, you have nothing in front of you because it's all burnt. You don't know where it all originated. You have no idea whether it was the power electronics which was at fault or it was it the thermal management of the battery that was at fault or the motors, you have absolutely no idea because it's all burnt. So it's going to be a big challenge and the regulatory point of view is going to be much different and I am sure the manufacturing inconsistencies are going to be having a bigger uh, impact on the safety compared to the previous regime which was the IC engines. Now imagine uh, the thermal, uh, thermal management industry today is about, you know, as, the, as, as Mr. Google tells me, is about $2.47 billion. But it's likely to increase in the next eight years to $9.62 billion. That's an 18% CAGR increase. And why is that so? Because we are still evolving. I think most of the questions that have been coming is, Primarily because we are looking for clarity in a stage of evaluation, it won't happen. Today we have certain set of rules for, for uh, regulating safety, but tomorrow those rules will absolutely be different if the battery changed, if the technology changed, if the trends changed. The whole thing, the whole dimension, the whole geometry will change. And therefore, it's very important that uh, we'll have to Although, obviously, the technology, as has been put in the context, will lead compared to the policies, but this is going to be a very dynamic situation because everybody is evolving, and to top it all, we have an India factor. Plus, we have another India factor, and that is we still want to ask that question, Kitna deti hai? because that is going to be there. And that is going to be very uh, specific question. What is the range of the battery? What is the efficiency of the system? And again, the thermal management is such a key role in such a situation is that if you charge the battery at 25 degrees C, maybe it's going to give you about 3,000 cycles of charging and discharging. But the same battery, if it was charged at 35 degrees C, which is just 10, plus, 10 degrees Celsius above, the number of cycles will be half. So now it is only 1,500. The whole thing has reduced. The whole thing has got a little inefficient further. Imagine you went to 45 degrees Celsius and started charging the whole thing again. It will still get half. So you have about 1,000 cycles left. So this is another importance of the thermal management, which will come in our discussions in the whole day, is that apart from the unsafe parts, it's also going to be performance issues. So this is going to be very challenging. The topic is very apt as of today, thermal management, which is going to evolve in the days to come. The inverter, the battery packaging, the battery internal resistances, the battery, the way you package it in, in the sense that if there is a fire incident, what happens? People are working on a, on a strategy that the battery pack can eject while there is a fire. Another problem I just get reminded is that we don't have a fire extinguisher for such a situa situation. So this is another challenge that we'll have. So if the battery gets ejected, then okay, you are okay, the rest of the shell is fine, but if you don't have that strategy, you are still in trouble. So it's very crucial to have the right thermal management of the, of the machine. Equally crucial is the manufacturing consistencies. And this is where most of the regulatory is about to follow. 
the, the surveillance system or let's say the COP system that exists right now is going to find a revolution and don't get irritated by this because it's got the, the impact that it has is fire. Earlier the impact that it had was performance. So, so everybody wanted to live with that, but now it's going to be fire and therefore we don't want to live with that. And therefore the regulatory regime is going to be a little more difficult compared to the rest. Uh, as of today, we have AIS 038. As of today, ICAT can do all the testings that are relevant. Uh, important would be for us, people like us, to catch up with the technology, to catch up with the, with the dynamism that is happening in this area. And I think uh, new batteries, much was talked about the aluminum air battery also. Uh, we are talking about a battery called LTO also, which has the least internal resistance so far that we know of. So, so lots of things happening and I think we will have to uh, catch up with this and regulations will keep changing. So be prepared for that and for the right reasons, I think. So manufacturing inconsistencies and consistency is one more dimension which will be a part of the additional regulations. So with this, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before we take question answers from audience, I have a very huge pressure from organizers to wrap up this and it's going very interesting. The conversation I think everyone is liking. Sir, ek sawal mera aap tino logo se. Before hamare jo audience hai wo haath uthaye unke pas mic pahunche. And very rightly, uh, Saurabh ji ne usko outline bhi kiya that we cannot copy paste from western region. But when it comes to creating our own policies, our own standards, it requires a period, consultation, inclusivity, and also participation from different stakeholders. And a trust is also needed that I'm going to speak something, going to put my energy, time, and resource to bring this on the table. It will be heard by somebody. So in this direction, ye kafi kushne ko aata hai ki during 2014, when we, we, we were uh, it's kind of investigating NGOs who were responsible for stopping many of the large infrastructure development projects. And most of these NGOs were surprisingly funded by foreign countries. Many of them, they got their FCRA and their foreign contribution cancelled. And then we realized that there are external forces out of India who wish to stop the very potential development we, we as a country could achieve. And when same type of countries, same type of you know, external forces or external strategies, we are seeing in today's scenario when it comes to your industrial development, when it comes to your capabilities. So this question comes to mind and comes to mind and comes to mind and comes to mind and comes to IITs, IIM, their technical teams, their technical group, their students, their, our scientists, they all are very, very significant and very capable of doing a lot of development out of India also and in, within India also. So, then we have to copy paste from somewhere, sometimes we have to appoint the uh, government ko bhi consultants appoint karne hai, who tell us that how to roll out a procurement model, who tell us how to make in a standard or sometimes they also bring this type of standard which does not work in India. So, are we running out of talent or are we running out of process or policies? If it is evidence-based, if the requirement of uh, need of the hour is evidence-based, then are we running out of use cases, business model, what it is which we are running out of? So, uh, Joshi ji, you can start, you can take whoever wish to take this question and then audience, if they want to ask something, please raise your hand by the time we finish this. Actually, it's a difficult question because we are always discussing it's a chicken and egg story. But chicken and egg story can be solved if people are together, if they feel they are empowered to make the things happen, and if they have a set of common ambition to roll. And as we can see in the EV policy, what we have for uh, government of India, the clear direction is that we need to have by 2030, 30% of electric vehicles on the road. By 2070, we should be net, ze net zero. It means that if we want to reach that level, we need to align our all processes. We need to align our skill sets. We need to align our mindset because mindset is the biggest challenge. And when all these things come together, we see that 
regulatory hurdles will not remain there. And uh, I believe that this is just a start of the revolution what we have been seeing in India. And I believe use cases what you mentioned, they empower us to do more and more better things. If we see that something is happening, something is working somewhere really well, people go and research that. And it is also a copy with pride for others because everybody cannot be an inventor. There has to be also people in the overall ecosystem who are able to scale it up. Means one side you have a R&D where you have the invention happening, one side you have the scale up, and then there would be a transition where you would need to move to the newer technology. And this next five to 10 years in this ecosystem are going to be completely uh, changing. It, we always need to have a change because uh, in army they call it that you need to have a model in which this, your terrain you are not familiar with, your team you are not always familiar with. You would be having challenges you need to overcome and on top of that you may have to come up with newer and newer technologies. So it means that there will be always something changing and we need to have a constant dialogue, stakeholder consultation. It may not be always in this forum, but it can be always through some associations. It can be certain nodal points because a government will have its own restriction to engage with different people. But associations play a very important role that they can collect, they can see where is the industry in general, where are your higher earners, where are your 80% of the market is going, where we should be focusing upon, and then we try to connect it. So I believe it's a, it's a bit difficult question to answer, but I try to explain it in my way. Very, very well. To an extent, you've given us the outline that on what path we are going. But here, where we have reached, Prashanji, if you can take microphone, uh, where we have reached after eight and 10 year of industry, the policies which were suggested to the earlier government before 2014 also, in 13 years we have spent with fame also. The results which we have got is some good number of sales which is growing. I am happy that it is going in right direction, but also the kind of utilization we managed to create in the public charging infrastructure and the business models or the procurement models which government managed to bring to people were, were not as sound as the lot of people from the audience would agree that many places when they reach to a charger, they say this charger is not working. And this was spent by some good consultation of three year, four year of policy making and, and the way government was instructed or they were consulted by the, I do not want to know, name any companies there who were intelligent foreign companies, they tell us how to put a, roll out a procurement and other thing. This is where we have reached after 10 years that the national average of a charging infrastructure which is used by public is only between 3 to 5 percent. The break even of that particular charger which may be 20 lakh rupees, 30 lakh rupees spent from the government pocket is 40 to 45 years. So is, is it going in that direction what Joshi ji said is the way we are going to go ahead, where we have gone wrong and what kind of uh, you know, safety net we can create that we do not again enter into some type of policy which gives us uh, infrastructure spent by government and nobody using it or maybe it's not usable. World's largest democracy with transport being in a concurrent list of uh, constitution having mandate from the central government and the implementation at state level with very interesting political, demographic, geographic and of course cultural diversity in India. I think uh, the juggernaut of India, resurgent India, rising India is asserting itself. It has reached to a point where all these initial teething difficulties, what we see is behind us and now with Honorable Prime Minister's Panch Prana announcement where one of the prana is very clear that, you know, relinquish the mindset of past and look for asserting India in 2047. I believe that the kind of requirement of inclusive mobility India has, where 80 percent of your mobility is two-wheeler and still the car is seen as a luxury product with initial challenge of electrification with initial higher cost of acquisition 
and then uh, different diversified views around electrification, hybrid versus pure electric versus ethanol versus other options of CNG and other alternate fuels. I believe India has progressed a lot. We should be mindful that all the developed countries, when they adopt technologies, billions of dollars goes into investment, whether it's a cell chemistry alone. So India doesn't have that, you know, wherewithal to invest in the basic advanced technology research. Therefore, knowingly, government of India adopted basic directed research approach, application-based approach, and accordingly we moved. So initial challenges of which charger to adopt, as Dr. Hanish Karashi was mentioning, the charger debate itself was a very, very big one. Japanese side, the Chadamo, the European side is CCS1 and CCS2, and then GBT by two. Now, if you have to penetrate and move forward with electrification, consciously the industry leader chose the lower cost affordable solutions of GB by T. But then for three years we negotiated and realized that over a period of time we will move to finally CCS. And today I am proud to say that generally now there is an acceptance that when it comes to car, we will have a CCS2 kind of, uh, you know, charging. So I think the size of the country we are in, the kind of the uh, large demand we have and the diversified transportation we have, I believe that Europe versus America versus China and Japan, I think we have moved a lot, progressed up, uh, fast, and this is a very small amount if you see what is being invested in FAME 1, FAME 2, uh, considering the size of the country. So I believe uh, there is nothing to feel uh, uh, shy about it, and I think we look for a very bright future. Thank you so much. Uh, Saurabhji, one last question from you. Whenever it started, I think 10 years back, and now we have a good history of seven, eight years of electric mobility in Peters from government, industry, and we have definitely traveled and reached to a point we have to go forward. In this, if you look at the prime ministers, I, I told audience that I'll give you two examples. One example I given, one statement of Gadkari ji I have already given. The other statement of the famous and our all honorable politician, Narendra Bhai Modi ji, is when you have to create ease of doing business, then you have to create that intent, content and extent. That intent, content and extent is when translated into reform, perform and transform. It brings you all those what you or your industry may require to grow and flourish. So reform when it comes, there are certain ways which government used to act, where we were feeling handcuffed with regulation, sometime act and sometimes there is no rule book for emerging technology into drones and in many sectors where we do pilot, there is no rule book. That need to be identified that this is the problem area for industry because of which we are not moving ahead. That's the part of reform. And then the transform is, I think all of you in this hall will be able to translate your transformation dreams and your transformation numbers. The critical part is the perform. When it comes to work together, bring something which is comprehensive and inclusive for everyone, that is the middle part. So in the reform, perform, transform, when it comes to perform, lot of people are very, very de dependent on a regulatory body and on the way they are understanding the industry, I'm very happy that I heard you and everyone in this hall will agree with me that you have absolute clarity of thought. And somebody at your stature, at your state, level, having absolute clarity of thought is also giving us very, very high confidence that when we reach out to you, you will definitely give us some of the solution, maybe not in the hour, but in the coming months and weeks. So from your side, we wish to know your challenges. Nobody goes to a regulatory body and asks their challenges. We all go and we throw our challenges as, ye kar do, sir, aisa kar do, waisa kar do. We all wish to know that where do you feel challenged? Is there us who are not giving you enough information, enough, you know, details, data, wherever, whatever you wish to take? Difficult one. Um, 
I imagine a India without a regulator, first of all. I think that's, that's the biggest imagination that I can have. And I, what I want to say through this line is that more the freedom, more the responsibility. So first of all, the regulators going forward and even today and since last about five, seven years, need to be seen as enablers, facilitators. And that's the way within our organization we are working it like that only. We are not uh, trying to act like a inspector or like a police or like a, you know, checking something and oh, this is wrong, this is not right, this is not right. Rather than trying to help people to make sure that they flourish. Because if they will flourish, we will also flourish. Very simple. Uh, with the recent policies of fame and now going forward we'll have the uh, PLI, there is a lot of entry of unorganized sector getting into this. Till now we had, we had very big players, very reputed players and we, it, it was quite organized, it was going on well. But now more help is needed. Because we are now talking about ease of doing business. We are now talking about startups, wherein people are learning and it becomes our responsibility to make sure that they understand this, uh, this subject. Because this is a lot more difficult to apply, make an application, what to write against what heading, uh, what is the need of writing so many applications, what is the need of submitting so much of data, we have to first explain them rather than just asking yes or no and you give it or you don't give it and that's, that's not the way going forward. And we in our organization have already created this uh, kind of you know customer satisfaction or customer delight kind of a concept which, which is going on. That's number one. Number two, I think a similar thing will have to be uh, reciprocated by all of us, all of us whether it is industry, regulators, academia, anyone, is that just make sure that, I mean, I, let me give an example. In the Scandinavian countries, if you have to charge a battery and you have to fast charge it or you have to charge it in an efficient manner, you have to heat it because the temperatures are down. And the most optimal kind of a temperature for a usual battery is 25 degrees or 20 degrees Celsius. In India, you have to cool it. Now if you don't, if you just want to copy something, we'll have to pay. All of us will have to pay. It's, it's not one specific person or two specific people. It's all of us who will suffer. So make sure that this India factor is, in, is imbibed in everybody's mind. Because the moment we start to copy things, we will not only burn our fingers, we will burn a lot many things. And that's not uh, that's going to create a very unbalanced equation of a regulator and an industry or or any kind of that nature imagine there were some thermal cases in the last one year and suddenly regulators became a little different people which which should not happen at the first place actually it should not happen but what happens is basically there can be two parts one we are learning which is okay all of us are learning but if we are just thinking of Designing a product in India, that also is good, but if you are thinking of importing a technology and putting it, then we'll have a lot more problem compared to how the life was in a fossil fuel regime. As I said, if you have an overheated car in an IC engine, I don't think we need this summit, just not required. Because the engine ceased, we replaced the engine, everybody flourished. That's okay. But here now, we have a situation where we are going to have nothing less than a fire. Now, it gets more important. It gets really more serious because it's not that a we, we were into a performance versus non-performance. Now, going forward, it will be safe or unsafe, which totally changes the equation. And this equation has to be understood by all of us. It's not about regulators or it's about academy or industry, it's about everyone. It's about 
everyone getting involved into this factor and making sure that we design products which are for India, which are one product for all the entire India. And if that is going to exist well, it will work in the whole world. So that's what I have to say here. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I think everyone, you can look at faces. They, they are enjoying this conversation which is going on. I hate doing this, but uh, we are running terribly short of time and terribly late from our schedule. So once again, I join all of you, want you, all of you to join me to thank our very significant, very defined speakers from different part of industry, industry academia, industry and uh, regulation and ministry both. And thank you so much, sir. I want all of you to be here with us so that we can give you a token of appreciation. I'm so sorry I will not be able to take questions from audience, but definitely off the dais we can take questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir.